Robotics is going to change everything. Artificial intelligence, everything. It's time for the next round. There's a genesis of AI. They're not moral agents. There's no engine, it's an app, so it's always on. This will be a place where people will touch, see, feel, and work alongside robots. We're not the first, we're living up to a legacy. I want to be like the Henry Ford of robotics. Um, you know, what you're seeing here are the Model T's. If robots are now your cars, would you be saying that everyone's going to own a robot? Well, that's my hope. Everyone in their garage having robots, 3D printers, tiny factories. Why couldn't your neighborhood be a community of makers, all working together? And what about the people who may say, but I'm scared about robots. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know how to control it. What do you think about that? I think that's more of a reason than anything for us all to be involved. Mm -hmm. There's a few people controlling everything right now. And if we, we're not involved and we allow people to do whatever they want, I'm actually less scared that the robots will do this than a person that shouldn't be doing it does. We went to York, Pennsylvania to meet with entrepreneur and AI and robotics expert John McElligot to find out where the field of robotics outside of Silicon Valley is heading. Can I ask how many businesses you've started in York? It sounds uh, like more than two I, or three. I, yeah, I've started, <laughs> so a serial entrepreneur, so I've started maybe 18 businesses. About five of them, apart from the ones I'm running now, run York. I soon learned that entrepreneur isn't quite the right description. A lot of times people ask me, what's it like being an entrepreneur? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm an industrialist. Industrialists create opportunities for other people, not just themselves, because you create a whole industry. And out of that needs service, and uh, there, there's opportunities for other entrepreneurs uh, to build companies and new technologies. John is an ex-Marine who has traveled the world, but I was yet to find out why he chose to establish his robotic empire in York. You could be doing this anywhere, and it could be much easier. You know, when I go to San Francisco, when I go to New York, when I go to Boston, the, the draw is very powerful. Um, you know, being able to go into a coffee shop and I just say the word robot and five people walk up and want to give me a card and start a company together. There's something very appealing about that. Um, but I don't know if it's the Marine in me or that I love adventure or challenge. There's also something amazing about being in a place that has done incredible things before. Like these are buildings to live up to, walls to live up to, machines to live up to, reminders that, um, that maybe I'm the first one trying this right now. I'm not the first one who have done amazing things and this town has changed the world multiple times over. York is a place where things happen. It was the first capital of the United States of America for about nine months. It's also where the Articles of Confederation were first signed. York is also known for its manufacturing and industry. York has, has been forever a center of the advancement of technology. Little old York was on Hitler's list. Really? Uh, on the hit list. On the hit list of <laughs> Hitler's hit Be because, list. Because, oh yes, because of our technology and because of uh, the example that we set for the country. Mayor Helfrich taught us how York's industrial capacity and cooperative community in the past inspired communities across the country during World War II. Before World War II, some of our industrial leaders here saw there's already a war in Europe, but that it was gonna affect America whether we liked it or not. So they started working together. Differences. They overcame their differences. Yeah, that's fantastic. And they started sharing tools. They mm -hmm. shared skills. They actually worked together as a unit. And then when the President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, needed a plan of how America was going to react to getting dragged into uh, World War II, the York plan came forward and they said, wow, this is an amazing plan. You guys, you know, you, and I don't think anybody else had a plan, so that helped, but. Uh, <laughs> so you but, were one step ahead. Yeah, we were, we were a step ahead yeah. of the game. And then the York plan was taken all across the country. And it was the example for how we on the home front could unite and work together to help support not only our troops, but our allies and freedom across this world. York's industrial past is a big driver for John's futuristic vision. Just up the street from where we are, they built components for the Mars rover. Like there are pieces of a robot built in York on Mars. And we're trying to get to Mars and York already got there. 
John showed us why he thinks downtown York is the right place for him to be. Over there is an old armory that's being turned into the kids' space. There'll be robotics things there and like a, a museum and touch and feel experiences for the kids. York College is there. York College is creating their knowledge park. So if you go three blocks that way, there's United Fiber and Data. This is the last largest undeveloped piece of land in York City, commonly referred to as the Northwest Triangle. We raised about $6 million to start the York Plan 2.0 Innovation District. This will be a place where people will touch, see, feel, and work alongside robots. Everything is accelerating at such a rate that, um, that the same way we weren't ready in 1940, we need to get ready now. And very, very soon, it's going to be all of us, not just York, that's going to have to get ready. Driving past the historic buildings that still line York City streets, I wondered why John asked us to meet him at the local McDonald's car park. So when I moved to York, a couple things struck me, the beautiful architecture, but also these murals that were all over town. This one is of the York Plan. Do what you can with what you have became the slogan of the original York Plan. When you first learned about that York Plan, I was a little surprised that it was in a McDonald's parking lot because I was like, this is the time that York saved the world. I mean, York has done all these amazing things, um, but most people know us for the peppermint patty, um, which is, I guess there's worse things to be known for. But is this where the peppermint patty yes, came from? Yes, York peppermint patty, yep. I love peppermint patties. <laughs> we'll get you oh my some gosh, peppermint and patties while you're that. here. We are in the, the land of peppermint patties, <laughs> but we have a lot more exciting things going on right here.